Hello, I'm Robin Mitchell and this is Mega.io. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about PID controllers, what they are and how they work. Now, PID controllers are something that you might hear of if you work in industry, uh, specifically industrial processes, but they are found in so many applications, including drones, uh, automation, um, processing equipment, you know, furnaces, uh, smithing, all these different areas of engineering rely on PID controllers. But what are they? What do they do? Well, are they just black boxes? Well, the really cool thing about PID is that it stands for proportional, integral, and differential, or yeah, differential. And the interesting thing about PID controllers is that they are used to correct errors, but the way they do it is pretty amazing. Now, a PID controller has the three different areas that we just talked about, the, the proportional, integral, and differential. But what it does, is it takes an error signal from a current process, let's say something like the speed of a car, and it sees where it wants the speed to be, let's say 40 miles an hour, but it sees that you're actually only doing 30 miles an hour. So it takes the difference, which would be 10, and then it will put this error value into three different blocks. The proportional block will multiply this error by some factor to give you a proportional figure. So how much is the error out right now? The integral block takes the signal and integrates it over time with previous results. Now, the really cool thing about the integral part is that it accumulates all of the past errors that have ever existed. So it sort of gives you an indication of what your error has done over time. So over all of the time of the journey, for example, you've always been about five miles an hour under the speed. So it will try and bump it up. And the last block of a PID controller is the differential block. And what this tries to do is to predict the error where it's going to be. By differentiating the error, you are essentially getting the gradient of the error or how much that error is changing per second. So what it does is by differentiating that signal, it can say, well, in the future, I think you're actually going to be five miles in, the, you know, in, in a few seconds time, you're going to be five miles out or three miles out. And the really cool thing about the PID controller is the way that the integral and the differential part work together. So the I and the D parts, the integral and the differential, can work together to cancel each other out. For example, if the differential system detects that you're going to be, um, your, go, your error is going to go very positive, but the integral system tells you that previously it's been very negative, so the two can cancel out, and so it does nothing because the system will correct itself over time. Now, PID controllers have to be configured with different constant settings, and it's all a bit fiddly, and more. this is all described in the how-to. Um, so when you use PID controllers, you have to sort of um, build the system and experimentally test it to see which uh, constants give you the best results. So to my left here, I've got an Arduino Uno set up as a PID controller with an external potentiometer, a capacitor and a resistor. And we're going to have a quick look at the behavior of a PID system. So when I adjust the, the uh, value of the potentiometer, you're going to see the oscilloscope value change but it doesn't change immediately. Instead, it sort of takes its time because this is the three different blocks working together to figure out the best way to get to this new value. So if I adjust the potentiometer quickly, it rises, but it doesn't instantly change. And this gives you good transitions that are smooth, that aren't too violent. So if I go back down a bit, it's, it's very similar to the sea level, of, you know, to the, um, to the level of water in a cup. If you shake it, it's sort of, takes its time to stabilize but as you can see it produces far more uh, fluid motion than it would if it was just an instantaneous fix and it definitely removes things like offshoots and stuff uh, overshoots sorry PID controllers are found in so many different applications and using them in your project can be quite beneficial but of course you have to ask yourself if they're worth it as they are quite complex and very fiddly to get working PID system in one uh, scenario may not work in another scenario. The PID on a drone could work perfectly for that drone, change the weight of the drone, change some, um, change some sort of variables, and it may suddenly not work. So that's our quick introduction of PID controllers. Thank you for watching and see you next time.